One day, we saw an unusual ship in the distance. It sailed in the entrance of the harbor, and strange-looking creatures began to get off. We thought they were gods, so we brought food and drinks as a welcome. The men were clad in iron, and a man in black with a crucifix was with them. There was some kind of misunderstanding, and our friendly greeting was soon followed by fighting. We had strong words, and a battle followed with many of our people killed. The strangers could not be hurt because of their strong skin. Our knives and spears could do nothing. They were finally overpowered, and one was peered in the eyes through the Pfizer opening. Who are these men, and what do they come for? The people from across the sea, Europeans and later Americans, Japanese and Chinese too, along with Filipinos and many others. Magellan was the first in 1521, sailing under the Spanish flag to find a route to the Indies. He and his exhausted and famished crew put in at Umatic Bay for a few days before sailing off to the west. Ferdinand Magellan, he's the first white man to ever set foot on a Pacific island, uh, Guam being the first place. And he's also the first white man to order the killing of native peoples. He's the first person of record to have been here stayed only for three days and then sailed off to the Philippines where he was later killed by the, uh, the natives there. More ships followed, some stopping to trade while others merely caught a fleeting glimpse of an island from shipboard. Names of islands began appearing on western maps. Islas de los Reyes, the island of the three kings, near Yap, sighted on that feast day. Isla de los Martires, an atoll west of Chuk where two sailors were slain. And San Bartolome, somewhere in the Northern Marshals. The West had discovered these distant islands, and the islanders had now discovered the West. A few brief encounters had taken place, but they were the start of a process that would change island life forever. Whatever the relation between these sea peoples in the deep recesses of their past, the coming of the European signaled a new age and the beginning of an adventure that people from every part of the region shared. It was the start of the age when they would all be known as Micronesians.
This is a church of Blessed Diego Luis de San Vitores, named for the Jesuit priest who headed the first mission to the Marianas. In fact, the first mission to any of the islands in the Pacific. Father San Vitores was bound for an assignment in the Philippines when his ship made a reprovisioning stop at Guam in 1662. Shortly after this, he wrote to his family in Spain. My desire is for the mission of the island of the Ladrones. They were the first pagans I saw, and it touched my heart to see their unfortunate fate since they were so neglected and there was no one to preach to them the gospel. I now understand the meaning of the words in scripture. I have sent you to preach the gospel to the poor. For the next few years, San Vitores barraged the Spanish court with letters requesting permission to found the mission in those islands. The Jesuit won the support of the Queen Mother, Maria Anna of Austria, the woman who lent her name to the Mariana Islands. But Spanish claims to the Marianas date back to a century earlier. Actually, Miguel de la Gaspi, uh, on his expedition of 1565, he took possession of Guam and the Marianas uh, for the King of Spain. For about 100 years, uh, the Spanish didn't do anything in Guam other than using Guam to reprovision their early galleon. Uh, they pick up water and fresh food in Guam and proceeded on to the Philippines or to Mexico. On June 14, 1668, San Vitores and five other Jesuits, together with several Filipino and Mexican catechists and an escort of some 30 Spanish troops, arrived on Guam to plant the cross on the island. With it, they also planted the flag of Spain, the nation that sponsored their endeavor. A local chief, Kipua, welcomed them. Immediately they set out to work, baptizing hundreds in Kipua's village in the surrounding area, and soon setting up the first school in the Pacific, San Juan de Letran. But within a short time, as a priest spread out to other parts of Guam and the Northern Islands, violence broke out. A couple of the catechists were killed, then a few of the soldiers. Then, in 1670, less than two years after their arrival, one of the priests was slain. The attacks were blamed at first on a Chinese castaway named Choco, who was telling the islanders that the priests were poisoning people with the water they poured on their heads during baptism. But there were other explanations for the hostility. The intense rivalry between villages in an island group that was split into many local factions the way in which the missionaries offended people as they lashed out at island customs, the indiscretions of the soldiers, perhaps, in seizing property and pursuing local women. 